going to tell us about some nearly quantum theories. Right. Uh, thank you, and thanks uh, to the organizers for the opportunity to speak. Um, I want to begin by correcting a serious, serious omission that is um, evident on the first slide. Where are the affiliations? Uh, I just uh, forgot. Okay, so let me kind of take care of that. Howard uh, is at the uh, here at the University of New Mexico, and Matthew is finishing the doctorate at uh, Perimeter and University of Waterloo, uh, Susquehanna University, and also I guess I'm supposed to say that uh, I'm partially supported by a grant from FQXR. Um, okay, so uh, some nearly quantum theories. Yes, we're going to be talking about theories that, from a certain point of view, are generalized probabilistic theories, but are very, very close to quantum mechanics. In fact, so much so that uh, if, if one has a certain attitude towards what I'll be presenting, one, I could imagine, one um, saying, you know, at the end of the day, nonsense, this is just quantum theory. Um, you can make up your own minds. Uh, all right, so to proceed. I'm going to tell you about some objects uh, called Euclidean Jordan algebras, which provide a framework within which one can talk about real, complex, and quaternionic quantum mechanics, at least in finite dimensions, in a unified way. And it's a framework that, in addition to embracing those three things, doesn't contain very much more, but just, just a little bit more, as we'll see. Um, after that background, um, we'll be talking about how you might form reasonable composites of Euclidean Jordan algebra reasonable from a sort of operational or probabilistic point of view. Um, we'll see that there are not very many possibilities, although there are some. And then finally, um, we'll talk briefly about how you might construct categories of Euclidean Jordan algebras. Actually, Euclidean Jordan algebras with specific embeddings into matrix algebra. Um, that, uh, in fact, in nice cases, are going to be not just uh, categories, but symmetric monoidal categories with a nice compositional structure. Uh, and in, in, indeed, uh, in nicer cases still, they'll be compact closed or even dagger compact. Um, and we'll get a sort of a nice unified version of quantum mechanics over all three of the classical divisions in this way. Um, okay, so what are Euclidean Jordan algebras? Well, um, Euclidean Jordan algebra is, first of all, a finite dimensional real vector space. It has a preferred inner product, so a real product space, I'll call it A generically, um, that is equipped with a commutative bilinear multiplication, which I'll call dot, actually a fatter dot. Um, uh, it's got a, a multiplicative identity element, which I'll just generically call U. Um, and it satisfies for, for all elements A, B, and C in, in the uh, algebra. First of all, this uh, equation here, which is known as the Jordan identity, you recognize that it's a, it's a sort of uh, restricted form of associativity. A squared here is just short for A dot A, so the Jordan squared. And also, the Jordan product needs to play nicely with the inner product. There's, again, a certain kind of associativity going on here. A dot B inner product C is A inner product B dot C. I can slide the B to the other side. Notice that since dot is commutative, I could also, if I had wanted to, have written this as B dot A comma C is A comma B dot C, meaning that multiplication, Jordan multiplication by B is self-adjoint with respect to this inner product. Um, also, a quick notational comment. Later in the slides, the notation for inner products will change. There will be a vertical bar. Do not panic. That is nothing different. It's just that I switched notation at some point and forgot to go back and change it here. Um, all right, so what are some examples of, of things with this structure? Well, um, there are the following examples, all of which are matrix algebras. Um, and in addition to giving the examples, I'm going to introduce a shorthand notation, which I, I, I urge you to try to take on board now because I'm going to be using it throughout. One can look at the, the algebra of n by n real self-adjoint matrices with this Jordan product. A dot B is AB plus BA, where juxtaposition is just multiplication of matrices, and one usually normalizes that by, by a half. This is usually called the anti-commutator. And in that case, I could also take for my inner product the usual trace inner product. I'm going to call that particular Jordan algebra R sub n for short, so that I don't have to carry all that notation around. Okay, I can of course do the same thing with a different ring of scalars. I can use the complex numbers. The same construction works. I get a completely Jordan algebra. Um, in this case, uh, notice even though I'm using the complex scalars, since I'm looking at self-adjoint operators, this is a real vector space. My traces here will be real. It's still a real inner product space. Call that example C sub n, C for complex. 
over here, uh, block H is the quaternions. We can look at quaternionic self-adjoint matrices um, with the same product and uh, dot, the same dot and the same inner product. And I would call that Q sub n a little perversely. You might wonder why not H sub n. And the reason is that H sub n looks to me like an n-dimensional Hilbert space, and I don't want to confuse myself, so I'm calling it Q for quaternions. Um, there's one other matrix example, and it's a very, very interesting one. If block O is the octonians, if you look at three by three octonionic self-adjoint matrices with the same dot and the same inner product, that again is a formally real Jordan algebra, but this only works in the three by three case. Well, actually, technically it works in the two by two case, but that's, I forget which it is, it's I think this one, it's one of the, one of the lower dimensional ones we've already uh, constructed, but not for any higher uh, end does it work. Um, that's why I put this in red. It's, it's exceptional, that's what it's called. It's the exceptional drawing. Okay, so that's what they are. <clears throat> why are we interested? Well, historically, they were proposed as a kind of abstract model for the observable of a quantum mechanical system, right? If, uh, a, if little a and little b are Hermitian operators representing observables, then a, b is no longer Hermitian. It's not an observable. Jordan wondered what to do about this, and he said, well, if I just add them and maybe normalize, then it's an observable again. And realize there was this more abstract structure. Um, very shortly after Jordan's work, Jordan, uh, together with uh, von Neumann and Wigner, came up with a rather remarkable classification theorem. A very, very lovely and not really trivial result. Um, all Euclidean Jordan algebras are direct sums of just five simple uh, Jordan algebras, or simple types of Jordan algebras. There are the real complex quaternionic matrix algebras that I just described are self adjoint parts thereof. There are the self adjoint uh, octonionic uh, matrices of uh, three by three octonionic self adjoint matrices, the exceptional Jordan algebra there. And there's only one other type. Um, uh, these are what are called spin factors, and they are uh, defined as follows Vn is the usual notation. It's an n plus one dimensional, or maybe I should say a, a one plus n dimensional <coughs> Euclidean space. And here's how you define the dot. I'll just not read that to you. You can see it there. Um, and the inner product is the usual one, usual Euclidean. Um, and that's it. Just these, and then things you can form by constructing the direct sums of, of these. We say that um, a Euclidean Jordan algebra is special if it's a Jordan subalgebra of the self adjoint n by n complex um, matrices. In other words, CM. For, for some suitable work. And all of these have such representations, therefore they are all special, with the one exception. E3 is not special. That's what makes it exception. <laughs> okay. Now, um, the, the Jordan product is a little bit mysterious. It's an old objection to this that the Jordan product's physical, the Jordan product of observables, has a physical meaning that is. If, if any, rather obscure. But fortunately, there's another way to look at Euclidean Jordan algebras that's closer to um, <coughs> probabilistic and operational uh, reality, maybe. Um, you, can, you can partially order any Euclidean Jordan algebra, you can turn it into a partially ordered vector space by defining as your positive cone, which I'll call A plus, the set of Jordan squares. It's not a triviality that that is a convex cone, but it is, and it makes this a nice ordered vector space. Um, so, for instance, we would say that a vector in A is greater than or equal to zero if it only if it's a square. You can also select uh, an, an order unit in a canonical way. Just take the Jordan unit. That's just a nice order unit. So you have an order unit space. Anytime you have an order unit space, you have the, the, raw, the raw material the machinery to discuss probabilistic notions. You can define effects to be uh, elements of the positive cone that are uh, under the Unit. States then are positive linear functionals uh, on your uh, on A that uh, are normalized to one on the unit, in which case it, little a is an effect and alpha is a state. You understood, you understand rather alpha of A as the probability of the effect A in state alpha. Observables then become sets of effects that sum to the unit as, as we've seen described several, several times. Um, you can also model, and this will be important in a moment, you can model continuous dynamics in a setting like that, this, by saying that a continuous dynamics is just a one-parameter group of 
what I'll call big G of A, which is the identity component, com component? component of, um, of the group of order automorphisms. Briefly, an order automorphism of an order, order vector space is just a map that takes a linear map on a linear automorphism. It's, it's an invertible linear map that takes the cone onto the cone so that it's inverse also takes the cone. Um, why the identity component? Well, because you want the dynamics to be continuous and um, and, and that's going to mean that, that your dynamics is in fact a path from uh, from the identity to to each uh, time evolution. Um, a quick comment here. Hopefully, I won't put myself too far behind in making it. Um, you could, in principle, say the physical dynamics should represent some possibilities for <coughs> physically real dynamics should represent some sort of a proper subgroup of big G of A. We're not doing that. It's actually kind of important to what we're doing that we're allowing all possible continuous dynamics, all mathematically possible continuous dynamics. That's an assumption that ideally one would like to weaken, and it's therefore a weakness of our approach that we haven't succeeded in doing that yet, or, or of motivating uh, adequately this, this choice. It's not an unreasonable choice, but it should be said. All right, um, if we look at Rn, Cn, and Qn from this point of view, then, in fact, we, we see quickly that we are, in fact, looking at real complex or quaternionic mixed state quantum systems uh, with dynamics just as usual. Um, dynamics as usual, but, but allowing for lossy processes. These aren't necessarily unitary. Um, Vn is a little stranger. Um, Vn is a sort of a generalized bit, as I think Howard mentioned in his talk, with an n-dimensional block sphere. Um, but in particular, when n is small, we get the familiar state spaces of the rebit, the qubit, and maybe it's a little less familiar, but the quaternionic bit, or what we'll call the quabit. So V2, in fact, is, is the same as R2. V3 is the same as C2, and V5 is Q2. Notice we skip V4. V4 is not quantum mechanics, nor are V6, V7, and the higher is It's a remarkable fact, truly a remarkable fact, that this order unit structure, therefore this probabilistic structure, totally determines the Jordan structure. The wonderful theorem that was discovered independently by uh, Max Cooker and Ernst Winberg uh, right around 1960, um, that an order unit space arises in the way that I've described from, from uh, a Euclidean Jordan algebra, in fact a unique one, um, if and only if the cone has two properties that make no reference to the Jordan product. One is self-duality, which Howard described in his talk, so I won't repeat. The other is homogeneity, which is simply that the, the group of all order, order automorphisms should act transitively on the interior of the positive cone. Obviously, I can't mix the boundary with the interior, but within the interior, I should be able to map anything to anything else. Um, as a side remark, oops, as a side remark, um, both homogeneity and self-duality can be motivated um, in, I think, pretty compelling ways, and in more than one way, from physical or operational or probabilistic um, considerations. Uh, one way of doing that is in a paper of mine from 2012, and then um, you'll see a different one in, in Howard's paper with uh, Marcus and Cosmo who did that team, um, went, went through a little of this talk. Um, so with that in mind, I think we could say that Jordan algebras are operationally a reasonably natural class of generalized probabilistic theories to study. Okay, that being the case, one wants to know how to compose them. The bad news is that in general, there is no reasonable way to place a, a Jordan product on the vector space tensor product of two Jordan algebras so as to get another Euclidean Jordan algebra. There are very sharp restrictions on the possibility for doing that. And I won't go into what they are, but they are severe. So, in general, our composites are not going to be simply the tensor product of the two factors endowed with some Jordan structure. And a consequence of that is that our composites in general can't be locally tomographic. The dimensions will have to be not those of A tensor B. Here are some desiderata. We're going to treat this as a definition. For us, a composite of Euclidean Jordan algebras A and B is another Euclidean Jordan algebra AB, together with a bilinear mapping from the product of the two Jordan algebras to AB. Incidentally, the bilinearity is essentially just non-signaling. Um, I'll, I'll generically say that this takes 
um, elements A and B. Think of them perhaps as effects to a kind of product effect, which I'll write as A circle dot B. So if you like the mapping, it's A circle dot B. Uh, subject to some plausible conditions. One is that the product of the units should be the unit. Another, goodness gracious, is that uh, basically product states assign probabilities in the expected way. I want to have products of reversible dynamics. And finally, I want the product effects, if you like, to generate um, the composite as a Jordan algebra, just to avoid spurious cases where maybe I add a, a direct sum at the end that I didn't need. Um, the first of our results is that if A and B are non-trivial, then there exists a composite satisfying these conditions only if A and B and the composite itself are all special. No exceptional summing is allowed. It just doesn't work. What's G? What is G here? G is uh, right here. It's the identity component of the group of order algorithms. Okay. Um, given that they have to be special, it seems reasonable to look at embedded Jordan algebras, what we're going to call embedded JC or EJC algebras. These are pairs consisting of a, uh, a Jordan subalgebra A of some complex matrix star algebra M sub A, um, everything unit. Um, these things have a canonical product. There's a sort of obvious way to put them together. If you've got two of these things, form the tensor product of the matrix algebras, and then look at the Jordan subalgebra of the self-adjoint part of this tensor product generated by the tensor product of A and B. It's going to be a basically a Jordan algebra, which I'll call A circle dot B generically. Um, from now on, I'm going to start overloading A for this pair A M A, but just bear in mind that every A comes with an embedding into the, the, the matrix star. Two more quick results. Um, this composite is in fact a composite that satisfies our previous definition. And moreover, this compositional rule is naturally associative, which is actually not so easy to prove. It's a, a nice thing that it's true. Um, OK, so what are some possible embedded JC algebras? Well, there are standard embeddings. Rn and Cn both embed in kind of obvious ways in n by n complex self adjoint matrices. Um, the quaternions can be regarded as, a, as an algebra of 2 by 2 complex matrices. So Q sub n can be thought of as, a, as embedded in 2n by 2n complex matrices. There's also an embedding that's less obvious of the spin factor Vn in m sub 2 to the kc, where n is either 2k or 2k plus 1. For details of that, see Matthew Graydon's upcoming talk on the 24th. There's also a universal embedding. Um, I'm, I'm so short of time, I'm not going to go through the details of the definition. You can read it there. The universal and standard embeddings are all the same, except in these three cases, Cn, Q2, and Vn, where you see we get these direct sums. I'll use the notation A tensor twiddle B for the canonical tensor product in the case of the universal embeddings. You can compute these universal tensor products, as they're called. Hansje Olsen did it in 83. And here's a quick table which is slightly wrong. Um, there should be a 2 here, a 2 here, and a 4 here, I believe. Um, notice that apart from those missing factors, everything is as you would expect, except for this, again, slightly mysterious direct sum here. Uh, you can also compute it in the case of two quaternionic bits, and you see lots of direct sum ends. A big theorem is that if A and B are simple, then AB, whatever it is, must be a direct sum and of this universal tensor product, which means there's only one choice except in this case, two complexes, you've got a direct sum, and in this quaternionic case where you've got several possibilities because of the direct sum structure. You can now form these things into categories. If you have any class of EJCs closed under this canonical composite, then define a mapping to be completely Jordan preserving if it's a mapping from the enveloping matrix algebras is CP. And, uh, and for every C in your class, phi tensor the identity on the matrix algebra for C preserves the composite structure, uh, the preserves the Jordan part of the composite structure. Theorem with this kind of mapping, this class with this composite is a symmetric monoidal category. Here are two special cases. Um, uh, never mind why they're so called. Um, if you look at all the quantum examples, throw away the VNs that aren't quantum, call that RSE. If you look at, uh, that's with standard embeddings. 
if you look at the, universe, the universally embedded quantum things, except for Q2, that's called URUE. Um, those inherit the, the natural compact structure from the category of matrix star algebras and CP maps, and therefore are both compact and closed. Uh, so both of those give you a way of unifying real complex and quaternionic quantum mechanics, one of them on the nose, and the other one URUE, except for the unfortunate admission of the quabit and the fact that when you couple two com complex quantum systems, you get something weird, something with an extra bit, an extra direct sum of structure. Um, there is a pure state version of the real and quaternionic restriction of this uh, due to John Baez. Actually, that's kind of motivation for part of this work. Um, we don't know for sure, but we conjecture that if you supply, if you apply a CPM to Baez's category, you get the, the real and quaternionic fragment of, of what we've done here. Um, finally, there's a striking feature of both of these categories, which is that if you tensor anything with a complex thing, you get a complex thing, which w might lead one to make completely wild uh, and absurd speculations about which the less said, the better. So let me close there. Okay. Thank you. Because the exceptional sum end is a, a set of three by three octonionic matrices, the, the rank of that Jordan algebra, which means in effect the number of pairwise orthogonal projections you can have is three. Um, if you have a simple Jordan, Euclidean Jordan algebra for which the rank is four or greater, it can't be that one and it's special. And now imagine you've got two non trivial Jordan algebras, they all have rank two or more. Think of the, the sets of projections that witness that as two observables. Well, if I take the Cartesian product of two observables, one having two outcomes at least, the other having two outcomes at least, I've certainly got something with, you know, four or more outcomes, and it can't be special, can't be exceptional. If it's simple, the hard part of the proof is reducing everything to the simple case, dealing with the possibility of direct sum ends if you composite, and that takes a little bit of technical work. So is it mostly that the universal um, I don't believe so, not from an operational point of view. I think that product measurements are reasonable. Can I comment on that? Yeah. So it, it's, I, I think the issue is that you end up, but there are theorems that this, well, it's, it can't be embedded into a matrix algebra, but if you make this tensor product, um, it's going to have to be ranked forward greater, and that is a matrix algebra, and, and so you can't have these embeddings with the tensor product. Why? That's that's right. What I said rules out A B being exceptional, but then Howard is correct. Uh, you then you then have to say that A and B are not exceptional for the reasons he's just mentioned. Any other questions? Uh, if not, let's thank Alex again.